Let's make our beginning in the name of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Begin by joining in the singing of glory, Lord, and honor. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. 
Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us blessing upon blessing, and daily we are witness to your generosity and grace. Keep us from pride and error, lest we presume upon your goodness, and believe that we merit what you have supplied to us in merit and mercy, especially the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who death in our place and whose resurrection from the dead have accomplished our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A psalm for the night, Psalm 110. Hear the Holy One speaking to my Lord. Hear the Holy One listen to his word.
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verses 10 through 1 through 10, verses 26 through 28. The great high priest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing in the cross of Christ our Lord.
in the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. What is the first petition? What does this mean? How is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught and is true and true. And we as the children of God are also to be holy lives and all to it. Now help us to do this to the Father in heaven. The man one of the Jesus of the Lord, the prayer of God's word, proclaims the name of God amongst us, protect us. Please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson recorded in the book of St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, the Good Shepherd. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated and join in and singing, Jesus keep me near the cross.
keep us near the cross. I like the verse that says, help me walk from day to day with the shadows over me. Jesus will keep us near the cross. It's not our own power, but by the power of God that we are able to walk day by day near that old rugged cross. Tonight we focus upon a familiar theme, one that you have heard over and over again. Perhaps maybe you've not read the story of King Uzzi. But many of you have heard the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 says, in the year that King Uzzi died, I also saw the Lord. King Uzzi indeed was a great king at the very beginning. And tonight we would like to use as a subject for our meditation, beware of enemy number one. Beware of enemy number one. Perhaps you will ask, well, who is enemy number one? I want to take you back, way back, the very beginning of creation. We know that God created all of the animals, I mean all of the animals, he created all of the angels, everything, the Bible says that God created good, even the angels. So you say, where did sin come from? We know that it was Lucifer, one of the good angels, that God created. And we read in the book of Revelation, you will find out that it said it was pride that caused him to fall. Pride. Pride that caused him to fall. That he wanted the glory of God. And who wanted to move himself above God. So he was seeking self-glory and pride. So pride caused him to be kicked out of heaven. Or because he disobeyed God. Came to earth and caused Adam and Eve to sin. So we say to you, beware of enemy number one. The Bible also says that God hates pride. Number one of the list of those seven sins that the Lord uh, lists that he hates. Pride is number one. So beware of enemy number one. This was the downfall of King Uzziah. Uzziah was a great king, and as you read in verses that 20, chapter 26, we'll find out that the Bible says of him that God was with him, and as long as he sought the Lord, God blessed him. As long as he did what was right in the sight of God, God blessed him. These are key words for us tonight to note that as long as we do what is right, in the sight of God. Now, we not going to always do what is right in the sight of God, but here again, we have the ability to come and ask for forgiveness. But as we look at King Uzzah, nowhere did he turn back to ask God for forgiveness. Pride caused his downfall. And no matter sometime, no matter what all good that we may do, is how we end up. Notice that he was known as a leper. And throughout all of the good that King Uzzah did, or the sinners came down, that he was a leper and that he turned away from God. Well, as we take a look at King Uzzah, the number of things that he did. The Bible says that he came into the throne at the age of 16, a young man led by Zechariah. Zechariah was priest at that time, and Zechariah encouraged him to do what was right, and he did what was right in the sight of God. And the Bible says, and God blessed him. That phrase comes over and over again, do what is right in the sight of God. Note that we must realize that all of our blessings come from God. No matter what, all of our blessings come from the Lord. Sometimes we forget that. People today forget sometimes that it is God who has blessed us 
It is God who keep on blessing us day by day. So, note with King Uzzah, he turned and forgot. Uh, as someone said, he got too big for his bridges. We hear that phrase used often and sometimes it applies to our lives that we sometimes forget. When God bless us, it seems as if we would turn more and more across, closer and closer to God. But we see it happening over and over again. It happened with us. The Lord bless us to get a few nippers to be able to rub together, and we forget from which we came. We forget that we have the attitude of looking down on others uh, because we have moved up, moved at a certain section of town that we are able to live in, purchase a new home, or what have you, that we forget what we was when we were down. Sometimes we often wonder as a race, why is it that God doesn't bless us to have, and I know many of you have gone and rode around and point to in certain areas, and uh, you look and you see all of these big fine homes, and you say, well, I wonder why God doesn't bless me to have this and have that and what happened. It might be that God is blessing us and we don't realize it. Blessing us because sometimes when he bless us with things of uh, that nature, material things, it have a way of turning us away from God. It have a way of us having the notion that we are better than someone else. What would happen right in the church here, right around us? Some of us, we feel that we have a few niggas who are up together, that we are better than somebody else. Failing to realize that every blessing comes from the Lord. Here we find this was the downfall of King Uzziah. Now, King Uzziah was such a great king, we hear the prophet Isaiah during that time was blinded by King Uzziah, by his greatness. Notice what those words that you've heard him uh, preach often from Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. King, the prophet Isaiah was a prophet, a man of God. And yet he says, it was not until Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. I know he was going in the temple, he'd been in the temple many times. But his focus now was upon King Uzziah, the greatness of King Uzziah, watching over us, protecting us, and doing Judah flourish under King Uzziah at the time. And so they said, oh, King Uzziah, the Bible says that he was known for and near for his greatness. Even into the foreign countries, he was known. But King Uzziah, got the big head. Like so many of us today, as God bless us, we forget. Just think about our old parents, how they trust in the Lord. Had little or nothing, came to church, many of them sometimes walked to church, had no car to ride in, but yet when we know people when they get cars and all of that, they forget about God and where he brought them. King Uzziah now felt so much pride that he thought that he could do what only was provided for the priest to do. Well, that would accomplish everything else he probably said to himself. So I'm going to go and do what only God has designed for the priest to do. Go into the temple to burn incense to the Lord. Notice there the priest warned him. Eighty of them. Eighty. I can imagine seeing him going into the temple saying, well, I can do whatever I want to do. But we get that attitude sometimes on the job when we are the boss and we think that we are above the law, 
policeman sometimes get that attitude, I'm the law, or I can do whatever I want to do. Yes, and even God's people move to that point of thinking that they can do whatever. That always that we lost for us to abide by. As long as we here on this earth, God's law does not change and will not change until he comes to carry us to be with him. So we must obey the law. He knows I go into the temple and all of these priests are racing in behind him, pleading with him uh, not to do that, not to do that. And yet he was determined and God set a plague upon him. Leprosy. Now, leprosy is a thing that, as we know in the Bible, separates us. And it's like sin, and we have often compared leprosy, the leprosy of sin, because what it does is separate us from family members, to separate us from our loved ones, or we no longer have the privilege to be with them or to hug them or be near them. And this is what happened with King Uzziah, because he was stricken with leprosy. And it was the job of the priest who determined whether, who had leprosy and determined whether they were clean or not. Nowhere as we read in the scripture where this disease left King Uzziah. Even in the Bible we find that people were clean and it was the task of the priest to declare them to be free, uh, clean again. And here we find uh, King Uzziah. He had died with this disease because he disobeyed God. Now, if we close, we say beware of enemy number one. God bless us for purpose. He blesses us to be able to pass those gifts on to others. Not to be a conduit, to let his blessing flow, not to block them up. And many of us, and we need to check ourselves sometime to see if we blocking God's blessing from flowing to others. He has blessed us. And one of the greatest blessings that he has given us is the blessing of salvation. That is the greatest blessing that God has given all of us. The blessing to be saved, the blessing of salvation. And we have to pass this blessing on. So we ask ourselves, are we passing this blessing on to our children, our grandchildren? Are we sharing the goodness of God and His grace and mercy with others? That's what God, that's why God has blessed us. He blessed us each and every day to be able to stay alive in order that we may speak of His goodness, of His mercy. We heard in the story here today of Melchizedek, who was a priest forever. Melchizedek represents Jesus or is a type of Jesus, who is a priest. And we know that Jesus served the position as we learn in catechism as prophet, priest, and king. He is our priest forever, like Melchizedek. Notice you heard in the reading there was no beginning for Melchizedek, no parents for Melchizedek, but he was a priest forever. Jesus is our priest forever that comes to rescue us, to pay <coughs> the price for our sins, to deliver us. Beware of enemy number one of crime. Don't let it take us down. Let us be humble. And the Bible told us throughout to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves and walk humbly before God. Pride can there's a saying that says, pride goes before the fall. And for all of us, when we become too proud and fail to consider others, the Bible uh, again reminds us that we have to consider others above ourselves. And when we fail to put self first, self first, the Bible tells us throughout to deny self. That's what pride is all about. When pride put self first, that I'm number one, that I have to be number one in everything, number one in all, then that's when we are headed for the fall. Deny yourself, Jesus says, take up your cross and come follow me. 
bring it through trials and tribulation. We have to follow him to the cross. We have to follow him as he goes to that old rugged cross at Calvary there to take away the sin of the whole world, to take away your sins, even the sin of Christ. May our prayer always be, Lord, keep us focused on you. That you are always first in our lives. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. As we bring our offering, we join in in singing the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. All the blood that will never lose its power. Thank you. 
kiadatom be helyet a And all of whom remain in our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously helped me this day. And I pray that you will forgive me all my sins where I have run wrong. And graciously keep me this night. Cause me your hands that I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let the holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Please proceed for a moment. You know, we have another night of Lent, but we are planning on doing the Satan meal coming. Or for Monday, Thursday, or Wednesday, that we will do it. And we need someone to do some cooking, fixing the spouse fruit, fruit spice, as it's called. Uh, some of you may have done it before and know how to do it. Uh, we'll have it take us, so we'll, or uh, you could see me, or I would like to do the roast of the lamb. No lamb meat is gone up now, so we'll, the church will pay for it, the lamb, but uh, we would like somebody to know how to cook it, do a good job of cooking it. Thank you, Mother. Get the roast the lamb. Okay. Remember, we kill the lamb and we, this is not a meal, but we come and then they eat a big meal, but all of this is symbolic of the Passover that happened uh, back during Jesus' time. So we ask that there are the other things that we need, we need more eggs, peel, uh, we need the fruit spice, and I do have a recipe for how to make the fruit spice. We need the parsley, we need the cups of water and all of that. We need to be able to set up for it. Uh, we, do, we do need wine. So we, we have time to talk about it, but I just wanted to mention that we are, are planning on doing it, so we need to get prepared. Okay. Is there any other announcements that come before us? We will share with you all of the things that we need for us for us. Please stand and for the Let us bless the Lord. Thank you to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our closing him, glory be to Jesus.
Go in peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you.